My name is Laura Neal. I am the Executive Director of Ohio Led Opera, the resident professional company of the College of Worcester in Northeast Ohio. For 41 summer seasons, OLO has been dedicated to the preservation, promotion, and production of the very best in operetta and traditional musical theater, both the acknowledged masterpieces and the neglected gems. With great anticipation and excitement, the company was ramping up toward its 42nd summer festival, when it became apparent, as it has now to virtually all arts organizations, that the severity and uncertainty of the COVID-19 virus make it impossible to plan for and proceed with our 2020 June to August season. With blooming optimism for the future, we plan to present the full 2020 schedule of repertoire and performances during the summer of 2021. We are greatly appreciative of the outpouring of understanding and support extended by our patrons, friends, and business partners in recent weeks. It is important during these challenging times to keep engaged by those cultural pursuits that bring us so much joy. Welcome to all from Rochester, New York. My name is Stephen Daigle. I am the Artistic Director of OLO. I would like to share with you some of the special programming that we are launching on our website over the coming months. With nearly 150 show titles by more than 50 composers, over 50 CD and DVD releases, many representing American premiere performances and world premiere recordings, the company has maintained a steadfast dedication to fulfilling its over 40 year mission to serve operetta and classic musical theater. Toward that end and taking advantage of technology and social distancing, we are providing our patrons during the summer a series of presentations that we are calling the 2020 Virtual Summer Festival. The show must go on. We have engaged several members of our cast of singers and musicians to provide virtual recorded excerpts from each of the seven shows which were to be produced for this year's festival season. These shows and singers will now be featured in our 2021 Summer Festival. These virtual musical teasers will appear on the OLO website on the dates the shows were originally scheduled to open this coming summer. Added to these offerings will be virtual performances presented by past company members, highlighting OLO's unique mission and giving testimony to the important role this company had in their artistic development. In addition, every week or two beginning today, we will be posting programs featuring OLO archival videos and audio clips, a special 4th of July presentation, and a virtual program of selections from a rare lyric theater work. For further details, please take a look at the schedule that appears during the intermission and at the end of today's feature, and continue checking the OLO website for descriptions and updates on this exciting sequence of virtual programming. Hello, I'm sending my best to everyone. My name is Julie Wright Costa. I am the Associate Artistic Director of the Ohio Light Opera. OLO began in 1979 as strictly a Gilbert and Sullivan company. It was not until the third season that the work of another composer was added, Johann Strauss's A Night in Venice. Although, as Steve mentioned, another 50 or so composers would year by year be added to the repertoire, G and S have constantly remained the backbone of our company. 
about one third of OLO's 2700 performances have been divided among the 13 extant works of this composer and librettist who more than anyone influenced the development of 20th century operetta and musical theater. I have had the honor and pleasure of performing at OLO in all 13 of these works. Although I dare not commit to a favorite, I am very pleased that as the first offering of this summer special OLO presentations, we are able to share with you complete a most engaging 2015 production of Gilbert and Sullivan's 1887 Rudigore, an old fashioned melodrama replete with witches, curses, ghosts, crime, and a mad woman. It is now recognized as one of the pair's most inspired creations.
possesses an endowed corps of professional bridesmaids who are bound to be on duty every day from 10 to 4. And it is at least six months since our services were required. Oh, the pious charity by which we exist is practically wasted. Oh, we shall be disendowed. That will be the end of it. Oh. Oh, Dame Hannah, you're a nice old person. You could marry if you liked. <laughs> Why, there's old Adam, Robin's faithful servant. He loves you with all the frenzy of a boy of to have been celebrated, I discovered that he was no other than Sir Roderick Murgatroyd, <gasps> one of the bad baronets of Rudigore, <gasps> and uncle of the man who now bears that title. As a son of that accursed race, he was no husband for an honest girl. So madly as I loved him, I left him then and there. He died but ten years since. I never saw him again. But why should you not marry a bad baronet of Rudigore? All baronets are bad, but was he worse than other baronets? <laughs> My child, he was a curse. Oh, but who cursed him? Not you, I trust. Whoa! The curse is on all his line and has been ever since the time of Sir Rupert, the first baronet. Listen. And you shall hear the legend. <laughs> Sir Rupert Murgatroyd, his leisure and his riches, he ruthlessly employed in persecuting witches with fear he'd make them quake he'd dock them in his lake he'd break their bones with sticks and stones and burn them at the stake this sport he much enjoyed did Rupert make a troid? No sense of shame or pity came to Rupert Murgatroyd. Once on the village green, a palsied hag he rested, <laughs> and what took place, I ween, shook his composure busted. For as the torture grim seized on each withered limb, the writhing dame, mid fire and flame, yelled forth this curse on him. Each lord of Rudigore Despite his best endeavor, shall do one crime or more once every day forever. This doom he can't defy, however he may try. For should he stay his hand that day in torture, he shall die. <laughs> A prophecy came true, each heir who held the title had every day to do some crime of input vital. Until with guilt or pride, I'll sin no more, he cried. And on the day he said that say in agony he died. <gasps> and thus we seem employed as died each word of Troy.
rock for all the Gap Academy. A set of false teeth for pretty little Ruth Rowbottom. And a pound of snuff for the poor orphan girl on the hill. Oh, Rose, pity that so much goodness should not help to make some gallant youth happy for life. Oh, Rose, why dost thou harden that little heart of thine? Is there none here away whom thou couldst love? And if there were such a one, verily it would ill become me to tell him so. Oh, nay, dear one, where true love is, there is little need of prim formality. Oh, hush, dear aunt, for thy words pain me sorely. Hung in a plated dish cover to the knocker of the workhouse door, with the naught that I could call mine own, save a change of baby linen and a book of etiquette. Little wonder if I have always regarded that work as a voice from a parent's tomb. This hallowed volume, composed, if I may believe the title page, by no less an authority than the wife of a Lord Mayor, has been through life my guide and monitor. By its solemn precepts, I have learned to test the moral worth of all who approach me. The man who bites his bread or eats peas with a knife I look upon as a lost creature. And he who has not acquired the proper way of entering and leaving a room is the object of my pitying horror. There are those in this village who bite their nails, dear aunt, and nearly all are wont to use their pocket combs in public places. Oh, in truth, I could pursue this painful thing much further, but behold, I have said enough. But is there not one among them who is faultless in thine eyes? For example, young Robin. He combines the manners of a Marquis with the morals of a Methodist. <laughs> Couldst thou not love him? And even if I could, how should I confess it unto him? For lo, he is shy and saith naught. <laughs>
consult you. Truly? It is about a friend. In truth, I have a friend myself. Indeed. I mean, of course. And I would fain consult you. About him? About her. Let us consult one another. I know a youth who loves a little maid. Hey, but his face is a sight for to see. Silent is he, for he's modest and afraid. Hey, but he's timid as a youth can be. I know a maid who loves a gallant youth. Hey, but she sickens as the days go by. She cannot tell him all the sad, sad truth. Hey, but I think that little maid will. Not sleep. Hey, but his face is a sight for to see. Daily he goes for to wail, for to weep. Hey, but he's wretched as a youth can be. She's very thin, and she's very pale. Hey, but she sickens as the days go by. Daily she goes for to weep, for to wail. Hey, but I think that little maid will. As a youth can be. If I were the youth, I should speak to her today. Hey, but she sickens as the days go by. If I were the maid, I should meet the lad halfway. For I really do believe that timid youth will die. Poor little man. Poor 
child. I sometimes think if she wasn't quite so particular, I might venture. But no, no, even then I should be unworthy of her. <laughs> My kind master is sad. Dear Sir Riven Murgatroyd. Hush. As you love me, breathe not that hated name. Twenty years ago, in horror at the prospect of inheriting that hideous title, and with it the ban that compels all who succeed to the baronetcy to commit at least one deadly crime per day for life. I fled my home and concealed myself in this innocent village under the name of Robin Oak Apple. My younger brother, Despard, believing me to be dead, succeeded to the title and its attendant curse. For 20 years I have been dead and buried. Don't dig me up now. Dear master, it shall be as you wish, for have I not sworn to obey you forever in all things? Yet, as we are here alone, and as I belong to that particular description of good old man to whom the truth is a refreshing novelty, let me call you by your own right title once more. Sir Riven Murgatroyd, Baronet of Rodigor! <coughs> it's like eight hours at the seaside. <coughs> My poor old friend, were there were more like you? <coughs> Would there were indeed. But I bring you glad tidings. Your foster brother Richard has returned from sea. His ship, the Tom Tit, rides yonder at anchor, and he himself is even now in this very village. My beloved foster brother, no, no, it cannot be. It is even so, and see, he comes this way. So we made for the bold mounseer, do you see? We made for the bold mounseer. But she proved to be a frigate, and she hopped with a port, and she fires with a 32. It come and come and here, but we answered with a cheer, which paralyzed the parley Do you see? Which paralyzed the parley Which paralyzed the parley do you see? Which paralyzed the parley then our can he up, and he says, says the that chap we need not fear. We can take her if we like, she is sudden for to strike, for she's only a Don Mounseer, do you see? She's only a Don Mounseer. But to fight a French Malal, it's like hitting up a gal, it's a lovely thing for to do. Why, we with all our thoughts, why we're sturdy British shots, but she's only a poor polyvoo, do you see? Why well, she's only up a parley boo? Why well, she's only a poor parley boo? You see, why well, she's only a poor parley boo? Then we up uh, with our helms and we scuds before the breeze and we gives a compassionate cheer. <laughs> he answers with a shout as he sees us go about, which was grateful of the poor mounseer. Do you see? Which was grateful of the poor mounseer? And our wager and their joy, they kissed each other's cheek. <laughs> Which is what them foreigners do. And they bless their lucky stars. We were hardly British stars who had pity on a poor polyvoo. Do you see? Who had pity on a poor polyvoo? Who had pity on a poor polyvoo? Do you see? Who had pity on a poor polyvoo?
cause our flag to be loved and dreaded throughout the civilized world? Oh, why, Lord, love you, Rob. And that's quite a trifle to what we have gone in the way of sparing life. I believe I may say, without exaggeration, that the merciful little Tom Tit has spared more French frigates than any craft afloat. But tain't for a British seaman to brag, so I'll just stow my John title and belay. But vast even mess, mate. What's got you all a cock bill? Alas, I love Rose Maybud and love in vain. You love in vain? Come, that's too good. Why, you're a fine, strapping, muscular young fella. Tall and strong as a Tagalog mass. Tough as a forestay. And a barren knight to boot if all have their right. Hush, Richard. Not a word about my true rank, whom none here suspect. Yes, I know well enough that few men are better calculated to win a woman's heart than I. I'm a fine fellow, Dick, and worthy any woman's love. Happy the girl who gets me, say I. But I'm timid, Dick. <laughs> Shy, nervous, modest, retiring, diffident. And I cannot tell her, Dick, I cannot tell her. Ah, you've no idea what a poor opinion I have of myself and how little I deserve it. <laughs> Robin, do you call to mind how years ago we swore that come what might, we would act upon our hearts, dictate? Aye, Dick, and I've always kept that oath. In doubt, difficulty, and danger, I've always asked my heart what I should do, and it has never failed me. Right, let your heart be a compass with a clear conscience for your binnacle light, and you'll sail ten knots on a bowling, clear of shoals, rocks, and quicksands. Well, now, what does me art say to me in this here difficult situation? Why, it says, Dick. It says, uh, it calls me Dick because it's known me from a baby. Dick. It says, you ain't shy. You ain't modest. You speak up for him as is. Robin, my lad, you just lay me alongside, and once she's become under my lee, I'll spin her a yarn that shall shard the fish you two together for life. Will you do this thing for me? Aye. Can you? Do you think? Yes. There's no false modesty about you. <laughs> You're what I would call bumptious self-assertiveness. <laughs> I mean the expression in its complimentary sense. <laughs> has already made you a bosun's mate, and it will make an admiral of you in time if you work it properly, you dear incompetent old imposter. <laughs> oh, oh. My dear fellow, I'd give my right arm for one-tenth of your modest assurance. <laughs> My boy, you may take it from me that of all the afflictions accursed with which men are saddled and happen and add on a diffident nature's the worst. Though clever as clever can be, a crime of early romance, you must stir then stump and blow you on trumpet or cross you happen a chance. If you wish in the world to advance, you're a parrot, you're bound to advance. You must stir then stump and blow you on trumpet or trust me, you have a chance. Now take, for example, my case. I have a bright intellectual brain. In all London City, there's no one as witty. I've thought so again and again. Ha! I have a highly intelligent face. My features cannot be denied. But whatever I try, so I fail in why, sir? I don't know. I'm modestly personified. If you wish in the world to advance, your merit you're bound to enhance. You must urge and stop and blow your own trouble, or trust me, you haven't a chance. As a poet and tender and quaint, I passion in fervor and grace. From orbit to horse to swimmer and morse, they all of them take a back place. That I sing and I play and I paint, though none are accomplished as I. To say so with treason, you ask me the reason? No, I didn't. Oh, I thought you did. I'm diffident, modest, and shy. If you wish in the world to advance, your merits you're bound to enhance. You must hurt and stop and blow your own trumpet, or trust me, you'll have it a chance. If you wish in the world to advance, your merits you're bound to enhance. You must hurt and stop and blow your own trumpet, or trust me, you'll have it a chance. Ha! Ah, it's a 
thousand pities he's such a poor opinion of himself. For a finer fella don't walk. Well, I'll do my best for him. Plead for him as though it was for your own father. That's what my aunts are remarking to me just now. But here she comes. Steady, steady it is. Oh, by the port admiral, but she's a tight little craft. Come, come, she's not for you, Dick. And yet, she's fit to marry Lord Nelson. By the flag of old England, I can't look at her unmoved. Sir, you are agitated. Aye, aye, my lass. Well said. I am agitated, true enough. Took flat aback. Oh, but tis not. It will pass. This here art of mine's a dictating to me like anything. Question is, have I a right to disregard its promptings? Can I do aught to relieve thine anguish? For it seemeth to me that thou art in sore trouble. This apple. Oh, no, my lass, taint that. I'm. I'm took flat aback. I never see anything like you in all my born days. Arbuckle me. If you ain't the loveliest girl I've ever set eyes on. There. I can't say fairer than that, can I? No. The question is, is it meet that an utter stranger should thus express himself? Yes. Always speak the truth. <laughs> I'd no thoughts of saying this here to you on me own account. For truth to tell, I was chartered by another. But when I see you, me art, it up and says, says it, this what? is the very last for you, Dick. <laughs> Speak up to her, Dick. It says, uh, it calls me Dick because we was at school together. <laughs> Tell her all, Dick. It says, never sail under false colours. It's mean. That's what me art tells me to say. And in my rough, common sailor fashion, I've said it. And I'm waiting for your reply. I'm a trembling, miss. Look you here. That's nervousness. No, how should a maiden deal with such a one? Keep no one in unnecessary suspense. Behold, I will not keep you in unnecessary suspense. Oh, that's what. In accepting an offer of marriage, do so with apparent hesitation. I take you. With a certain show of reluctance. Oh, Rose. Avoid any appearance of eagerness, though you will bear in mind that I am far from anxious to do so. A little show of emotion will not be misplaced. Pardon this tear. <laughs> Rose, you've made me the happiest blue jacket in England. I wouldn't change places with the Admiral or the fleet, no matter who he's arguing of at this present moment. Uh, but, uh, asking your pardon, miss, might I be permitted to salute the flag I'm going to sail under? An engaged young lady should not permit too many familiarities. Oh, once. <laughs> Battle's roar is over, oh my love. Embrace thy tender love, oh my love. From time this welter from war's alarms, forgive me shelter within those arms. Forgive me shelter within those arms. I
happened to her? I, the lad, I have, so to speak, I spoke to her, and she refuses. Why, no, I can't truly say she do. <laughs> then she accepts, my darling. Kill the writer, kill the writer. Belay, my lad, belay. You don't understand. Oh, Sir Belay, I beseech you. You see, it's like this. She accepts, but it's me. <laughs> you. Hail the bridegroom, hail the bride. Let the nuptial knot be tied. In their praises, in their praises, hail the bridegroom, hail the bride. Hold your tongues, will you? Me poor lad, me heart grieves for thee. But it's like this. The moment I see her, and just as I was a-going to mention your name, me heart it up and says, says it, Dick, <laughs> you fell in love with her yourself. It says, speak up, be honest and sailor-like. Don't skulk under false colors. Speak up. It says, take her, you dog. And with her, my blessing. <laughs> Disappointing, you know. Oh, but, sir, I knew not that thou didst seek me in wedlock, for in very truth I should not have hearkened unto this man. For behold, he is but a lowly mariner, and very poor withal, whereas thou art a tiller of the land, and thou hast fed oxen, and many sheep and swine, oh, a considerable dairy farm, and much corn and oil. That's true, my lass, but it's done now. Ain't it, Rob? <laughs> well, it may be that I should not be happy in thy love. I am passing young and little able to judge. Moreover, as to thy character, I knew not. Nay, Rose, I'll answer for that. Dick has won thy love fairly. Broken-hearted as I am, I'll stand up for Dick through thick and thin. Oh, thank you, messmate. That's well said. That's spoken honest. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Yet methinks I have heard that sailors are but worldly men and little prone to lead serious and thoughtful lives. And what then? Admit that Dick is not a steady character and that when he's excited, he uses language that would make your hair curl. Grant that he does. It's the truth. I'm not going to deny it. But look at his good qualities. He's as nimble as a pony, and his hornpipe's the talk of the fleet. <laughs> uh, thank you, Rob. That's well spoken. Thank you, Rob. But it may be that he drinketh strong waters, which do bemuse a man and make him even as the wild beasts of the desert. Well, suppose he does, and I don't say he don't, for rum's his bane, and ever has been. He does drink. I'm not going to deny it. But what then? Look at his arms, tattooed to the shoulder. <laughs> no, no, I won't hear a word against Dick. <laughs> but they say that mariners are rarely true to those whom they profess to love. Granted, granted. And I don't say that Dick isn't as bad as any one of them. You are, you know you are, you dog. <laughs> a devil of a fellow. A regular out and out Lothario. <laughs> but what of that? <laughs> you can't have everything. And a better hand at turning in a dead eye don't walk a deck. <laughs> and what an accomplishment that is in a family man. <laughs> no, no, I won't hear a word against Dick. I'll stand up for him through thick and thin. Thank you, Rob. You're a true friend. I've acted according to me art's dictates, 
and such orders as them no man should disobey. In saving your life's ocean wide, your heart should be your holy guide. In summer's here and favoring wine, yourself in poor to surely pine. My heart says to this maiden strike, she's captured you, she's just the sort of girl you like. You know you do, if for her men her heart should gain, I shall resign. That's what it says to me quite plain, this heart of mine, this heart of mine. My heart says you've a prosperous lot, with acres wide, you mean to settle all you've got. Upon your bride, it don't pretend to shake my axe by word or sign. It merely states these simple facts. This heart of mine, this heart of mine. Ten minutes since my heart said white. It now says black. It then said left. It now said right. Heart's often dark. I must obey its latest strain. You tell me so. What should it change its mind again? I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Saving all life's ocean wide, no doubt your heart should be your guide. But it is awkward when you find a heart, a heart that does not know it's mine. A heart that does not know it's mine. A heart, a heart that does not know it's mine. A heart, a heart that does not know. Yes, very, but why be steady? Don't call. 
degree, degree, with flattery, sated like Conan, inflated away from the city we flee, we flee, from tundra to mirrors and prettiness, where all the sudden transition is simply a vision, from Amaryllis and Chloe and Phyllis, your space for the moment are we, your space for the moment, your space. gets warped and destroyed. It's due. It's a penalty none can avoid. How true. I once was a nice-looking youth. Oh. But like stone from a strong catapult, a choice. I rushed at my terrible cult. That's nice. Observe the unpleasant result. Not nice. Indeed, I am telling the truth. <laughs> oh, innocent, happy though horse. Me. If I had been a virtuous, I'm sure. Me. I should be as nice looking as yours. You are very nice looking indeed. Oh, innocent, listen in time. Avoid an existence of crime. Just so. Or you'll be as ugly as I. No, no. And now, if you please, we'll proceed. <laughs> are certainly steeped in infamy, but whose heart is as the heart of a little child. But what is a poor baronet to do when a whole picture gallery of ancestors step down from their frames and threaten him with an excruciating death if he hesitates to commit his daily crime? But <laughs> I am even with them. I get my crime over. 
first thing in the morning. And then for the rest of the day, I do good. I do good, I do good, I do good, I do good. Two days since, I stole a child and built an orphan asylum. <laughs> Yesterday, I robbed a bank and endowed a bishop rick. <laughs> Today, I carry off Rose Maynard and atone with the cathedral. Uh, this is what it is to be the sport and the toy of a picture gallery, but I shall be bitterly revenged upon them. I shall give them all to Donald Trump's presidential campaign. <laughs> And none of them shall ever be looked upon again. <laughs> Ask your honour's pardon, ah, but... Observed, and by a mariner. What would you with me, fellow? Your honour, I'm a poor man, a war's man, becalmed in the doldrums. I don't know them. And I make so bold to ask your honour's advice. Does your honour know what it is to have a heart? My honour knows what it is to have a complete apparatus for conducting the circulation of the blood through the veins and arteries of the human body. Aye, but has your honour a heart that ups and looks you in the face and gives you quarter-deck orders that it's life and death to disobey? I have not a heart of that description, but I have a picture gallery that presumes to take that liberty. <laughs> your honour, it's like this. Your honour had an elder brother. It had. Who should have inherited your title. And with it, its curse. Aye, but he died. Oh, Riven. He didn't. He did not. <laughs> he didn't. On the contrary, he lives in this here very village under the name Robin Oakapple. And he's a going to marry Rose Maybud this very day. Riven alive! And going to marry Rose Maybud? Can this be possible? Now, the question I was going to ask your honour is ought I to tell your honour this? <laughs> I don't know. It's a delicate point. Really? I think you ought. Mind, I'm not sure, but I think so. That's what me art says. Mm. It says, Jingle! <laughs> it says, uh, it calls me Dick because it's entitled to take that liberty. Oh. Dick! It says, <laughs> that there young gal would recoil from him if she knowed what he really were. I should have stand off and on and let this young gal take this false step and never fire a shot across her bowels. <laughs> no! Oh. <laughs> it says, you did no! not ought. And I won't act according. Then, you really feel yourself at liberty to tell me that my elder brother lives, that I may charge him with his cruel deceit and transfer to his shoulders the hideous thraldom under which I have labored for so many years? Aye. Free. Free to live a blameless life and to die, beloved and regretted by all who knew me. <laughs> You understand? I think I do. With vigor and shaken, this step shall be taken. It's neatly planned. I think so too. I'll readily bend it. You'll never forget it. For duty, 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 duty must be off. The rule applies to everyone. And blame for all the duty be. To shirk the task with little dee dee. To shirk the task with little dee dee. To shirk the task. To shirk the task with little dee dee. 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 Likewise, the prize, the friends are merry and mated and merry, they are her charms. To lash their pride would almost a pity the pretty commit. For duty, duty, duty must be done. The rule applies to everyone. And painful will the duty be to shirk the task with little dee To shirk the task with little dee To shirk the task. To shirk the task with little dee 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 dee
each other. I claim young Robin as my elder. His rightful title I have long enjoyed. I claim him as Sir Ivan Megatron. I would, if conscientiously I could, but I cannot. Ah, this one! Ah, this one! Ah! As pure and blameless peasant, I cannot, I regret, deny a truth unpleasant. I am that baronet. He is that baronet. But when completely rated, that baronet am I. As I am what he stated, I recklessly deny. He'll recklessly deny. When I'm a bad part, I will tell Terry Diddles. So tell Terry Diddles when he's a bad part. I'll play a bad part on the bosses of fiddles. On very false fiddles, he'll play a bad part. But until that takes place, I must be conscientious. He'll be conscientious until that takes place. Then I'll do with good grace to my moral sententious. His moral sententious, I'll do with good grace. I'll do with good grace to his moral, his moral sententious. When I'm a bad part, I will tell Terry Diddles. On very false fiddles, I'll play a bad part. I'll play a bad part on the bosses of fiddles. And tell Terry Diddles when I'm a bad part. When he's a bad part, he will tell Terry Diddles. On very false fiddles. Person now. That's why I met you. 
and I to Margaret must keep my vow. Have I misread you? Oh, joy, if you live in the fountain of thy need, he'll be for you. I once disliked you. Now that I've reformed, I adore you.
Painful state of things, old Adam. Painful indeed. Ah, my poor master, when I swore that come what would, I would obey you forever in all things, I little thought to what to pass it might bring me. The confidential adviser, the greatest villain unhung. <laughs> now, sir, to business. What crime do you propose to commit today? How should I know? As my confidential adviser, it's your duty to suggest something. Sir, I loathe the life you are leading, but a good old man's oath is paramount, and I obey. Richard Dauntless is here, with pity knows me, but ask your consent to their marriage. Poison their beer! Oh, uh, not that. I know I'm a bad Bart, but I'm not as bad a Bart as all that. Uh, well, it's no use my making suggestions if you won't adopt them. How would it be, do you think, were I to lure him here with cunning wile? Bind him with good scout rope to yonder post, and then, by making hideous faces at him, cut ah, off the very hot blood in his arteries, and freeze the very marrow in his bones. How say you, Adam? Is not the scheme well planned? It would be simply rude, and nothing more. <laughs> but soft. They come. <laughs> Happily coupled are we, you see. I am a jolly Jack Tar, my star, and you are the fairest, the richest, and rarest of innocent lasses you are, my far of innocent lasses you are. And by a favoring gale, you'll sail over life's treacherous sea with me. And as for bad weather, we'll brave it together, and you shall creep under my lee, my wee. And you shall creep under my lee, my wee. For you are such a smart little craft, such a neat little sweet little craft, such a bright little tight little slight little light little trim little prim little craft. Oh, she is such a smart little craft, such a neat little sweet little craft, such a bright little tight little slight little light little trim little prim little craft. But my hopes will be blighted, I fear, my dear. In a month you'll be going to sea quite free, and all of my wishes shall grow to the fishes, as though they were never to be.
pretty one, within my power at last, eh? Know ye not that I have those within my call who at my lightest bidding would immure ye in an uncomfortable dungeon? What ho? Within the... <laughs> Hold! We are prepared for this. Here is a flag that none dare defy. And while this glorious rag floats above Rose Maybud's head, the man does not live that would dare lay unlicensed hand upon her. Foiled! <laughs> and by a union jack! <laughs> but a time will come, and then... Nay, let me plead with him. Sir Riven, have pity. Time was when you loved me madly. Prove that this was no selfish love by according your consent to my marriage with one who, if he be not you yourself, is the next best thing. Your dearest friend! In my heart is I had thy love, thou hadst my heart. But fate all human vows above, our lives did part. By the old love thou hast for me, by the fond heart that beat for thee, by joy. ancestors be satisfied with what I have done? Or will they regard it as an unworthy subterfuge? Oh, my forefathers, wallowers in blood, there came at last a day when, sick of crime, you, each and every, vowed to sin no more. And so, in agony, called welcome death to free you from your cloying guilty. Let the sweet psalm of that repentant hour soften your long dead hearts and tune your souls to mercy upon your poor posterity. <laughs>
Confusion, who art thou that thus with icy glare and stern, relentless brow appearest? Who knows how? Alas, poor ghost. The pity you express for nothing goes. We specters are as jolly as you, perhaps a pawn. We specters are as jolly as you, perhaps a pawn. In the night when house in the chimney cows and the brat in the moonlight flies and inky clouds like funeral shrouds sail over the midnight skies when the footpads quail at the night birds wail and black clouds gray at the moon then is the spectre's holiday then is the ghost high noon <laughs> And a grisly cream, good night. Till the welcome bell of the midnight bell brings forth its joyous tone and gushes in our next high holiday. One turn of the night's high noon. 
Because as a work of art, you are poor. <laughs> I am crude in color, but I have only been painted ten years. In a couple of centuries, I shall be an old master, and then you will be sorry you spoke lightly of me. <laughs> May I ask why you have left your frames? It is our duty to see that our successors commit their daily crimes in a conscientious and workmanlike fashion. It is our duty to remind you, you are evading the conditions under which you are permitted to exist. Really? I don't know what you have. I've only been a bad baronet a week, and I've committed a crime punctually every day. Let us inquire into this. Uh, Monday. Monday was a bank holiday. Uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> True. Tuesday. Tuesday? I made a false income tax return. <laughs> That's nothing. Nothing at all. Everybody does that. It's expected of you. Wednesday. On Wednesday, I forged a will. Oh, whose will? My own. My good sir, you can't forge your own will. Can't I, though? I like that. I did. Besides, if a man can forge his own will, whose will can he forge? Uh, there is something in that. Uh, yes, it, it seems reasonable. At first sight, it does. Fallacy somewhere, I fancy. Uh -huh. A man can do what he likes with his own. I suppose he can. Well, then he can forge his own will, stupid. Oh, how very dare you. On Thursday, I shot a fox. Oh, <laughs> That's better. Pass the fox, I think. Yes. Pass the fox. Friday. Uh, on Friday, I forged a check. <gasps> Whose check? Old Adam's. <laughs> but Old Adam hasn't a banker. I didn't say I forged his banker. I said I forged his check. <laughs> on Saturday, I disinherited my only son. <laughs> but you haven't got a son. No, not yet. I disinherited him in advance, to save time. You see, by this arrangement, he'll be born already disinherited. I see. Uh, but I don't think you can do that. My good sir, if I can't disinherit my own unborn son, whose unborn son can I disinherit? Hmm. These arguments sound very well, but I can't help thinking that if they were reduced to a syllogistic form, they wouldn't hold water. Oh, now, quite understand us, we are foggy, but we don't permit our fogginess to be presumed upon unless you undertake to, well, uh, suppose we say, carry off a lady. Oh, <laughs> those who are in favor of his carrying off a lady, those of a contrary opinion. <laughs> Oh, you're never satisfied. <laughs> yes, unless you undertake to carry off a lady at once. I don't care what lady. You perish in inconceivable agony. <laughs> carry off a lady? Certainly not, on any account. I have the greatest respect for ladies, and I wouldn't do anything of the kind for worlds. No. No! I'm not that kind of baronet, I assure you. If that's all you've got to say, you'd better go back into your frames. Very good. Then let the agonies commence. Oh, 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 oh don't, do, don't do that. I can't stand it. Oh, 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 oh. Painful, isn't it? It gets worse by degrees. Oh, 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 oh. Stop it. Stop a bit. Stop. I want to speak. Oh, oh, oh. Better. 
Yeah, yes. Oh, oh better now. Oh. <laughs> well, do you consent? But it's such an ungentlemanly thing to do. As you please. Uh, carry on. Oh, I agree. I promise it shall be done. Today. Today. At once. At once. I agree. I promise. Oh, I had no idea it was anything like that. He yields, he yields, he answers to a call. We do not ask for more. A sturdy fellow, after all this late is running on. A sturdy fellow, after all this late is running on. A perishing unheard of woman. So pardon us, so pardon us, so pardon us for a So pardon us, so pardon us, so pardon us for a I pardon you. I pardon you. He pardons us, he pardons us, he pardons us for a Master is not well. Oh, Gideon Quall, it won't do. I see them, all my ancestors. They're just gone. They say I must do something desperate at once or perish in horrible agonies. Go, go to yonder village. Carry off a maiden. Bring her here at once. Anyone, I don't care which. Not a word, but obey. Fly. <laughs> <laughs> Away, remorse, compunction hence, go, moral force, go, penitence. Don't 
Once was a very abandoned person Making the most of evil chances Nobody could conceive a worsen Even in all the old romances I blush for my wild extravagances But be so kind to bear in mind We were the victims of circumstances That is one of our blameless dances I was once an exceedingly odd young lady Suffering much from spleen and vapors Clergyman thought my conduct shady She didn't spend much upon linen drapers It certainly entertained the gamers <laughs> My ways were strange beyond all range Paragraphs got into all the papers we only cut respectable capers I've given up all my wild proceedings My taste for a wandering life is waning Now I'm a dab at penny readings They are not remarkably entertaining A moderate livelihood we're gaining In fact, we rule a national school. The duties are dull, but I'm not complaining. This sort of thing takes a deal of training.
We have been married a week. One happy, happy week. <laughs> Our new life is delightful indeed. So calm. So unimpassioned. Master, all this I owe to you. See, I am no longer wild and untidy. My hair is combed, my face is washed, my bloomers fit. Margaret, don't. Pray recollect yourself. Remember, you are now a district visitor. A gentle district visitor. You are orderly, methodical, neat. You have your emotions well under control. I have. Master, when I think of all you have done for me, I fall at your feet. I embrace your ankles. I hug your knees. Hush. This is not well. This is calculated to provoke remark. Be composed, I beg. Ah, oh, you are angry with poor mad Margaret. No, not angry. But a district visitor should learn to eschew melodrama. Visit the poor by all means and give them tea and barley water. But don't do it as if you were administering a bowl of deadly nightshade. It upsets them. <laughs> and then when you nurse sick people and find them not as well as could be expected, why go into hysterics? Why not? <laughs> because it's too jumpy for a sick room. How strange. Master, how can I express the all-absorbing gratitude that... No. Yes, I know, dear. It shan't occur again. Shall I tell you one of poor Mad Margaret's old thoughts? Well, then, when I am lying awake at night and the pale moonlight streams through the lattice casement, strange fancies crown my poor mad brain. And I sometimes wonder that if we could hit upon some word, some word that teems with hidden meaning like... Basing Stoke. <laughs> it might recall me to my saner self, for after all, I am only poor Mad Margaret, crazy leg, poor peg. <laughs> the cat and the dog and the little puppy. Poor child. She wanders. <laughs> but soft, somebody comes. Margaret, be composed, I beg. Uh, Basing Stoke. Margaret, if you do not Basingstoke at once, I shall be seriously angry. <gasps> Basingstoke it is. Then make it so. Despot and his young wife, this visit is unexpected. Shall I fly at him? Shall I tear him limb from limb? Shall I rend him asunder? Say but the word oh, and Basingstoke! Basingstoke it is. Then make it so. My brother! I call you brother still, despite your horrible profligacy. We have come to urge you to abandon the evil course to which you have committed yourself, and at any cost to become a pure and blameless great payer. But I've done no wrong yet. No wrong? He has done no wrong? Did you hear Ooh, that? Basing Stoke. Basing Stoke it is. My brother, I still call you brother. You observe, you forget that you have been in the eye of the law a bad baronet of Rudigore for ten years and are therefore responsible in the eye of the law for all the misdeeds committed by the unhappy gentleman who occupied your place. I see you. Bless my heart. I never thought of that. Was I very bad? Awful. Oh. Wasn't it? And I've been going on like this for how long? Ten years. 
think of all the atrocities you've committed by attorney, as it were, during that period. Remember how you trifled with this poor child's affections? How you raised her hopes on high? No cry, my dear. Basil is so Only to trample them in the dust when they were at the very zenith of their fullness. Oh, fie, sir, fie! She trusted you! Did she? What a scoundrel I must have been! There, there. Don't cry, my dear. It's all right now. Birmingham, you know. Birmingham. <laughs> it's Basingstoke. Oh, Basingstoke, of course it is. Basingstoke. <laughs> then make it so. There, there. It's all right. He's married you now. Oh. That is, I've married you. Oh. My good sir, which one of us has married her? Oh, I've married her. <laughs> oh, I'm glad of that. <laughs> yes, he's married you now, and anything more disreputable than my conduct seems to have been, I've never even heard of. But my mind is made up. I will defy my ancestors. I will refuse to obey their behests. Thus, by courting death, atone in some degree for the infamy of my career. I knew it. I knew it. God bless you. Oh, Basingstoke. Basingstoke it is. <laughs> my eyes are fully open to my office situation. I should go at once to Roderick and make him an oration. I should tell him I've recovered my forgotten moral senses and I don't get up and tap any for any consequences. Now I do not want to perish by the sword or by the dive upon a modern day and a little pardon of a smile and a word or two to compliment my vanity would find her, but I've got to die tomorrow, so it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter, 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 matter. So it really doesn't matter, 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 matter. So it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter. So it really doesn't matter, 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 matter. If I were not a little mad and generally silly, I should give you my advice upon the subject really nearly. I should show you in a moment how to grapple with the question, and you'd really be astonished on the force of my suggestion. On the subject, I should raise your most valuable letter full of excellent suggestions when I feel a little better. But at present, I'm afraid I am as mad as any heart, so I'll keep it to myself, for my opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Her opinion doesn't matter. Matter, 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 matter. If I had been so lucky as to have a steady brother who could talk to me as we are talking now to one another, who could give me good advice when he discovered I was adding, which is just a very favor, on which you I am concerning, my existence would have made a rather interesting idyll, and I might have lived and died a very decent individual. This particularly rapid, unintelligible patter isn't generally heard, and if it is, it doesn't matter. 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 This particularly rapid, unintelligible patter isn't generally heard, and if it is, it doesn't matter. This particularly rapid, unintelligible patter isn't generally heard, and if it is, it doesn't matter, 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 Master, 
Sir, the deed is done. What deed? She is here, alone, unprotected. Who? The maiden. I carried her off. I had a hard task, for she fought like a tiger cat. Shh! Great heavens! I'd forgotten her! I'd hoped to have died unspotted by crime, but I am foiled again, and by a tiger cat! Shh! <laughs> Produce her and leave us. Once upon a time, she was engaged to be married to me. I'm very angry. Very angry indeed. Well, may this be a lesson to you in the future, not to... Hold your tongue, sir. <laughs> yes, uncle. <laughs> Have you given him any encouragement? Have I given you any encouragement, frankly, now, have I? No, frankly, you have not. Anything more scrupulously correct than your conduct, it would be impossible to desire. You go away. Yes, uncle. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a strange meeting after so many years. Very. I thought you were dead. I am. 
I died ten years ago. And are you pretty comfortable? <laughs> pretty well. That is, yes, pretty well. Oh, well, you don't deserve to be. But I loved you all the while, dear. And it made me dreadfully unhappy to hear of all your goings on, you bad, bad boy. <laughs> Intrusion is unmannerly. I'm surprised at you. I can't stop to apologize. An idea has just occurred to me. A baronet of Rodegore can only die through refusing to commit his daily crime. No doubt. Therefore, to refuse to commit a daily crime is tantamount to suicide. It would seem so. But suicide is itself a crime. Therefore, by your own showing, you ought never to have died at all.
I see. I understand. Then I am practically alive. Oh. Undoubtedly. When you believed I was a simple farm, I believe you loved me. Madly, passionately. But if I should turn out not to be a bad baronet after all, how would you love me then? Passionately, madly. As before? Why, of course. <gasps> Darling. Hail the bridegroom, hail the bride, let the nuptial love be tight. Ever I say, belay, belay. Oh. Belay? Certainly not. <laughs> when a man has been a naughty baronet and expresses deep repentance and regret, you should help him if you're able, like the mousy in the famous That's a teaching on my book of etiquette. That's a teaching on my book of etiquette. Having been a wicked baronet a week, once again a modest livelihood I seek. Agricultural employment is to be a key to join the court of natural the dependent and me. What is that a dependent and me? You may ask me why I do not pipe my eye. Like an honest British sailor, I reply. That was all upon my missus. There'll be bread and cheesy pieces, which is just a sort of ration I enjoy. Which is just a sort of ration you enjoy. Prompted by a king desire to evoke. All the blessed color matter of only joke. We shall toddle up to model from the scene of sin and fellow court to settle in the town of Basing Stoke. Prompted by a king desire to evoke. All the best of 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 all the best of